Wow. Praise the Lord. It's going live in a few seconds. Praise God. Bless you, bless you, bless you, saints. I've been struggling here. <laughs> Praise God to get our uh, streams going online as well as on YouTube. So are finally up. Would you please take a minute to share and let everybody know that we're, we're live now. We're going live now for day seven. Day seven of our -wee, September seek. Hallelujah. And I can ask you all how the day has gone. But I can also imagine and I can also sense and know that some of you all Hey, Sister Donita, bless you. Good evening, Minister Elder Jenny Moore, Hicks Moore. God bless you. Good to see you all. Come on in and say something. Say something. Let me know how you're doing. Rachel, I love you. Lady Vicki, Vicki Harris, woman of God, thank you for hanging in with us. Thank you for joining us. Mother Sherry, we're so grateful for you all. Hi, Sister Debbie. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Day seven, y'all. Day seven. One week down. One week down. One week down, ha, yeah, 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 yeah. And I know, I know what's happening. I can tell, Sister Misa, I can tell what's happening. Oh, the devil's mad, but we're so glad. We're so glad about it. Good evening, woman of God. I want to say Mother Snyder because you're my mother. Because <laughs> you knew me from Holy Tabernacle when I was singing in the, in, the, in the little kids' choir. Praise God. Hello, Sister Melvina. Justina, good to see you. Praying again for salvation for you. My God, that's on. Deidre. To seeing a pray for salvation for your husband. Sister Lynn, I love you. Asia, grace and peace, grace and peace, grace and peace, grace and peace. Let me tell you, it's on. It's on and popping. It's on and popping. Good evening, Sister Yvonne. God bless you. Good to see you all. I'm so glad that you're all on here. And I pray that your day has been well, has been well. Y'all been meditating? Have you been able to get... Your mindset, have you been able to carve out, Sister Nikki, bless you, carve out time just to hear what the Lord is saying? Are you keeping it ever before you? I know it's been a holiday, but even within the holiday, y'all, if you see me looking this way, I'm also recording for YouTube. Some, some of the saints can't, uh, you know, they don't do the Facebook. <laughs> so I I'm make sure that I'm streaming live for them as well tonight, day seven. Day seven, praise God, Sister Bethany, and I appreciate you, Sister Denise. Y'all been hanging in there with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shalia, I praise God for y'all. I'm just excited about what the Lord is doing in all of us. Today's been a worship day, Sister Jenny. Yeah, you got to worship. Some saints, I, I was getting messages today. I'm just like, we praying and we've got to worship. Let me pick this camera a little bit. We've got to worship because the enemy is coming. Yes, yes. Praise God. Amen. Powerful. Sister Misa, it was a good day. Challenging in its own way. And challenges are part of the process. Hallelujah. But we're not we're not falling back on the assignment. And we're not going to renege on the invitation. We're not going to say we're coming and we're going to change our minds. Amen. Now we in here. Praise God. Lately as I've been prayer, it's like, yes, your mind's wandering. <laughs> of course. Hallelujah. Thank you for your roof for acknowledging that and saying what everybody else has been dealing with. Because that is the battleground. That is the battleground and that is exactly what the enemy does not want you. Um, he don't, he, he's not worried about your spirit. He's not even worried about your body. But what he wants is your mind. And he wants your mindset. That whole framework. So if he can keep you. Um, yes, it's the Valerie. We keep moving forward. If he can keep you. Keep you distracted. You know, I thought about today. It was a beautiful day outside, a beautiful Labor Day, and a lot of us are with our families. But I pray that you fasted your one hour. I pray that in the midst of all of that, yes, sir, come on, Rachel. You got, yes, Mother Rachel. You, you, you somebody's church mother, I know, but with the power, they're going to come looking for you to pray for them. Praise God, because what God's going to do in you. Hallelujah. Yes. All right, I'm reading. I had a hard time putting in my prayer and Bible time today understand see when this gets beautiful that's a, a major distraction but it was a, it was like a per the last few days have been really like beautiful days like perfect sun not too hot just hot enough nice breeze blowing you just just like oh i just love it where have all this time been and this is for us in boston for those of you all in other states like down south mr rachel i know it's uh, you know it's hades hot in jacksonville <laughs> 
praise God, but I, it's a beautiful day to, to be on the beach. And we I don't go to beaches in Boston. I mean, I go visit, but no one's getting into that cold water. It can't trick me. I know I know what a real beach is supposed to feel like. Warm water, you can't even tell if you're in the water, if you're outside. Praise God. But um, I, I'm so grateful for you all. Um, and you all continue to press in and push in. Yes, you're writing, you're writing, writing, and studying scriptures. You got to. All right. Amen. Oh, my Mother Maddie, thank you. She passed the day from 6 to 6. God will honor that. God will honor that. God will honor that. God will honor your press and your push. Now, would you please share and invite others? If everybody can just press the share button um, and just until the broadcast is over. I'm not saying hog your page with, you know, 30 days seek, although we should because God is doing something in us. So we want everybody else to know. Praise God. Go ahead and share. Just hit share. Share. Right, like the page and share, and y'all can do your hearts. I don't know if I see hearts, but I see them after because I go back and I do try to um, read a lot of the comments. And, and as you all are having prayer requests going, sometimes when I'm ministering, I can't see, or I'm really focused on um, what what I have to say, so I'm, I don't always um, can read. So I do try to read and go in. And thank you all again for engaging on the page. It's so important that we know that we're a family. What the Lord is doing in all of this is breaking down our mindsets. So much of our cultural mindsets and our denominational mindset. That's the trick of the enemy. Because it puts us, it pits us against each other. And we begin to, uh, it's one thing to have spirit, like church spirit. But it's a whole nother thing when there becomes inside of us um, this pride that can't see the small church down the street as part of my brother and my sister. Um, when we're, when we're so great and grand that we take on the church spirit and the church spirit is exclusive and we find ourselves actually discriminating against the body. It is foolish. And it's a trick of the enemy. And what the Lord is going to work on a lot of our pastors and our leaders because the body has got to come together. Why the enemy can have such, um, a parade, and make a mockery of the kingdom and the things of God in our in our godly nation right now. Why is it so conflicting that you can watch people who are calling the name of God and yet you feel the great hate and the fear and it's all undergirded by a Bible and you're saying, I believe God, Jesus is my savior and that is not in me. There's something else happening here something else happening here and I believe that the Lord is speaking to many people and we're a part of that where he's calling us to come out from among them come out from among them I'm calling my people forward and what I'm calling you into the presence of the most high because I need to give you a mind change I need to give you I need to let you see the strategies strategies of the enemy if you know how your enemy moves, then I will give you the inside, right? So I'm going to show you the secrets, right? I will show you the hidden patterns of how the enemy moves. And when you know the ways of God and you align yourself with the way God moves, you are assured victory. You are assured victory. So while people are going down, God says, I have already forecasted your rise. Your rise is dependent upon many are called, few are chosen. Well, the invitation goes out. The people who are chosen are the people who shows up. Because you show up, then God says, thank you for the invitation. Now, you, you don't until you come close, there's no impartation unless there's proximity. So God will call you into a place of fellowship with him. And that fellowship is where he begins to impart his mind and his wisdom upon you. Um, there's been a lot going on with a lot of our... Seekers, and I'll say that. Is that everybody's a seeker? I'm a seeker. Are you a seeker? All right, I can call us all seekers. So some of us have been hit, been hit. the enemy is like upset. I, I know that there's great spiritual warfare going on. And I would like to put some context tonight as I read some of the postings today that people are struggling. <clears throat> and I understand that as the Lord moves with us, as we begin to share certain things, that they cause things to trigger. Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 4, I believe it was, and also in Luke, when he had fasted 40 days, it says that the devil, he was led into the wilderness, right? The devil led him. How, how is Jesus, the son of God, led into the wilderness by the devil? Here he is for, fasting 40 days and 40 nights. And you figured if you're fasting 40 days and 40 nights, then you got some power. The devil is not approaching you. 
The devil's not afraid of the presence of God. Yeah, if I was in church, I'd be, I'd be like quiet. Everybody be quiet right now. The devil is not afraid of the presence of God. You remember in the book of Job? In the book of Job, what happened? Did you read the book of Job? Remember when the sons of God had gathered before the throne of God? And who was among them? Satan. Satan came up. He came up, and Job is the first, first book written in the Bible, okay? Not Genesis. Job, the book of Job was the first book written. And so in the book of Job, there are many hidden secrets about the fall of man and the depth of communication and access that we really have into the realm of the spirit. It, it reveals a lot of the mysteries that we miss because we kind of read it as if it's some ancient book, but it's really a book that was a fort. It's time. And so the Lord will cause us to get into this place to where he's going to unveil a hidden knowledge to us. Because what the enemy wants is for you to be blinded in your mind. He doesn't, you know, you can speak in tongues, you can pray. But if you don't get an understanding of the word, then he has you. Because when the gospel is preached, and if you don't hear it and don't understanding, then whatever is in your heart slowly but surely becomes uprooted because you feel something, but you don't comprehend it. And so the enemy... Is coming. That is that is his master tool. That's his master tool that he uses on the children of God is ignorance. He keeps us in darkness. He keeps us in our religious antics. He keeps us getting dressed for church, Sunday morning praise and worship, amen, our monthly fasting service. But as long as we never understand patterns of how he moves, patterns and structures, as long as we this word that we read is almost like covered and veiled to us and it's a mystery and some things we push aside because it's like that's real complex. And I've heard preachers say, you know, I'm not going to touch that. I'm not going to touch that. You, the, the book is open. A lot of people, people don't preach about being filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't understand it. Although, and I take that back because I have understanding. I understand why they don't do it because I see how the enemy has begun to infiltrate the church. And that's why the Lord had to shut it down. He had to shut down the building because so many people were receiving a plethora of erroneous doctrines and teachings. Erroneous doctrines and teachings that we were really comfortable with being churchy and we're like, God's going to bless you. And when you think that God's going to bless you, you think, oh, I'm going to get a check, I'm going to get this car, I'm going to get a thing. But you never think of the person that's in the shelter with her two children, that the power of God is resting on her so mighty, that God has blessed her and favored her. Because the world is really not worthy of her. So we look at the external blessings, the tangible things. And we say, oh, she's just going through. All oh, why God has been bragging on her because the faith that moves in her heart or the move in his heart, is, it moves the heart of God. When Job was living, the, son, the Bible says that when the sons of God gathered, the devil was in their midst. And the Lord God said, pray to God says, Job, where have you come to the devil? Where have you been? I've been seeking, roaming the earth, right? Because this is his domain. It still is his domain. So this is definitely after the fall. This is definitely after the fall. He comes and he says, have you considered my servant Job? And he says, yeah. Job is a praying man. He said, but you got something around him. There's something that you have around Job. Listen, what was around Job, the devil could not enter could not even pass through to get to Job. Yet the devil had access to come into the holiness of God. Think about that for a second. I can't even touch Job. I can't come into his territory. I can't affect his body. He's praying for his children. He's doing this. He's doing that. You know, there's a force field around him. There's something around him that my power and my Influence cannot get through to him. But here's the devil, and he's showing up in the Holy of Holies. He's showing up in heaven before God. And God is having a conversation with the devil. Just got to pause for a second. You see, that, that'll shake your whole ideology about how we war in the spirit. And what is this warring all about? How do we do that? He says, yep, you got him covered, though. He believes in you so much. He knows. He knows stuff. He knows things, right? He 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 got he got another level of influence. Influence. The key is influence around him that I can't penetrate. And so the enemy decides. 
Um, and God gives him permission. He says, you can touch him, but you just can't touch. You can't touch his body. You know, you, you can destroy all stuff. You know, he loses everything. But you can't touch his soul. He belongs, you know, that soul, that the soul of Job, the soul of Job you can't touch. And so that's the battleground. You've heard it spoken. You've heard it mentioned that the mind is the battleground. The mind is so very key and so very important in our spiritual walk. I was thinking today before we got on the before I got on live and just praying and asking God throughout the day I'm praying, seeking God, want to keep myself filled up, want to keep myself in a place of prayer. And I remember um, a, a demonic visitation that I had a few months ago. A few months ago, I was uh, laying down. I'm, it's going to be between morning and evening, so, you know, in the morning, early morning and the nighttime, late night. And I was like sitting on the front of my stairs of outside. And I looked up and there was a woman. She was gliding, gliding towards me. She's gliding towards me. She's shrouded and wrapped up. She looks just like my grandmother. She looks like, I love my grandmother. My grandmother was my first mom. She, I, she was the first mom I knew. She raised me until I was 10 when I came to America. And my mom had been in America working to bring us all here. Um, and so, dream is yay. Um, and so, uh, my grandmother was that force in my life, that very strong force, right? So, in my country of Trinidad, we're very spiritual people, very close to a lot of occult activities. So as a child, I always saw things that no one else saw. I was tormented with the night terrors. I, I, I would see them. There's still some of those images that are, are locked into my mind of things that kept me up for long periods of time. Um, you know, you didn't want to go outside. You didn't want to go into a certain room or, or certain things. You can, there are things that you're seeing in the corner and everybody's like, what's going on? And, and I'm talking. And some of the things I don't even remember, but my parents, my mom and my uh, grandmother would tell me things that I used to say and things I used to see. See, that's just the gift on you. If it's on you, it's on you. So as you grow into your adulthood, the gifts of God are without repentance. He doesn't take it away from you. I'm going back to say that I saw this spirit being coming towards me, gliding towards me, and my heart stopped pounding. I'm telling you, because well, it was scary. <laughs> it was scary. The blood of Jesus, but it was still scary. And I jumped up and I ran in and I shut my door. And like she was dressed in like a long robe and she was wrapped like almost like um, an older Muslim woman. But it was, it was just very, I know she's very, she was a spirit, a very spiritual person. And her face was so stern. But I'm looking at her. She's, she's clouded as, as my grandmother. But I'm like, that is not my grandmother. And I ran in and I closed my front door. But some of her clothing was caught like in the door. But I shut it to not to keep it closed. And some of you all know a couple, like a week and a half later, my granddaughter almost died in a car in my driveway because she went in and she locked herself in the hot sun on the same side where the spirit being was coming. I'm saying that to all, all to say to you that we're in real warfare. And for those of you all, I am not trying to scare you, but I don't even care about scaring you. I need you to understand th this is lower level stuff. This is lower level. When people say, oh, don't say nothing, girl, because, you know, the devil's going to come after you. You're, the devil's not coming after you until you really begin to rise. When he starts seeing that you're being elevated and you haven't bowed your knees to him, then you start. The more influence you have over lives of people, the more influence you begin to have when your light begins to shine brighter, then you become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Then you are getting ready to enter into certain realms. You have to understand the warfare that we're in, engaged in. And I can't, in all truthfulness, engage in a seek, in this 30-day seek, and not at least go into scripture and show us, to some degree, what you're really dealing with. What you're really dealing with is when we begin to plead the blood, when we begin to, you know, call on the Lord Jesus Christ. There's other things that we have to work, because the enemy... There's some spirits you have. Most people I see cat demons cast out of them are people who have been in church and they're serving in ministry. A lot of pastors have darkness inside of them. And there's great, they do great work and great ministry. But there's other things that the enemy have access to in our minds. I talked to you a little bit uh, this week about, um, I don't know, I was talking to my, my, uh, one of my daughters 
and the Bible says, people said, come pray for me. Can you please pray for me? And I, I'm always mindful of said, what exactly do you want me to pray for? Because I understand how deliverance work. When you pray for an individual who just wants to be free of whatever is tormenting them, but they have not made up their mind that they're going to serve the Lord. That demon leaves and it, the Bible says, and it wanders into barren places. You cast it out, you rebuke it, you plead the blood, you bind the strong man, you cast it out. And the Bible says that it goes and it wanders around into dry. And after a while, it says, I'm going back home. I'm going back home. And the scripture says that when it returns and find the house swept and clean, that it brings seven others stronger than itself. So that the end of that person is worse off than their beginning. It's worse than their beginning. We don't talk about things like that in our, in our services, in our church. We, we want to come and do the things that are, are nice and neat. But if you're talking about Jesus, and I would say, your Jesus was born because a spirit impregnated a virgin and had a child. That is our Jesus. If you're not talking about that depth of spirituality on all levels, and that's what you believe, and then you believe, because you believe on him, greater works that he did, you're supposed to do. My question is, somebody's lying. Because if we have all this faith and belief in the Lord, and we are not operating with the power and the manifestation that the word says we should, then what is happening? Or what has happened? What is going on? Why did God call us to the seek? What does he want to reveal to us in this time? In this time, what is it that he's seeking? I know a lot of you all will deal with a lot of opposition. You have to. You have to deal with opposition. And you have to deal with the spirit of fear that comes to attack you. The spirit of fear. I was in the shower and I felt that thing on me. I'm like, woo. Okay, so tonight's going to be one of those nights that we have to deal with certain strongholds. We got to deal with certain mindsets. We got to go into this word and ask the Holy Spirit to cover us, but to illuminate us. Because the enemy is not afraid of you speaking in tongues. He's not afraid of your fast. No, what he really wants is your mind. And he wants to stay you, keep you blind and ignorant concerning his devices, concerning how he works. As long as you don't know how he works, you're going to run around in circles. You're going to believe what was told to you. You're going to, you're going to do religion the way that it was given to us. And it's going to be just fine. While there are people all around us, do you notice, or maybe it's just me. Do you notice the rise in black spiritualism? Do you see how there's a lot of burning sage and smudging and a lot of the yoni eggs and a lot of the different herbal bats and senses and a lot of release. Do you see what's happening before that? Do you understand how uh, yoga became a big thing and that they wanted children instead of going outside to play that they need to sit and they need to practice all these different downward dogs and all these rising suns and they want to practice all these to have them breathe and to think and to open themselves and while they're putting their body in certain poses that really are deities in the demonic world and so we said oh they're so hyper just let them sit and breathe no let's bring in the, the, the yoga yoga is a religion yoga is a religion and so namaste we don't namaste anybody the blood of jesus the blood of we don't we do not we do not utilize and so we, there's a fusion and a mixture of our faith. Why? Because we're ignorant concerning the devices of the devil, and it may be hard for some of us to hear because I see nothing wrong with it. That's why we have to talk about it. That's why we have to open it up. That's why you need to know that a lot going to your children's room. There's a lot of paraphernalia. All of a sudden now there's all these crystals that we're bringing into our homes. And it's only a rock. Well, if it's only a rock, it can stay outside. There's no need for crystals to be in your house. Why? Because you're channeling energy. What energy is channeling through crystals? The power of the Holy Ghost? That destroy yokes? That set the captives free? Was Jesus walking around with big crystals on his neck? Was he looking to the sun? Was he, was he sitting? Was he meditating and crossing and... Namio, Ringe Quo was, was all that part of it. So you can find your center 
what's he going through and finding the chakras in the body because there's real information in what they're doing. There's real knowledge. They understand what they're doing, but they're being operating and, and following divisive demonic forces that are influencing the mindset. The mindset. So yes, you go and you find the, the shaman or you find the person that can read your palms and they can tell you about, you know, I see your grandmother and she used to wear a blue knitted shirt and she's right here right now. And so what's happening? There's a demonic spirit that is now emulating the image of your grandmother and the person who is summoning that individual actually seeing a picture of your grandmother. So they begin to tell and to say what you're saying and you start crying because, oh my God, that is my nana, that's my nana and, all the, and, you're, and you're feeling so like and so easy and now you go home but then something else follows you and you don't see that so you're fine okay and they come and say I want to be rich I need to hit the numbers and you get the numbers but then you don't see that what, what, what was happening on those numbers those winning numbers was the spirit of cancer that was not just going to happen to your body but it's going to come through your generational line your daughter your sons and so the none of your kids can have all your children are barren because you entered into dark covenants without even recognizing or knowing my God what we were doing Lord, help us tonight in the name of Jesus. Help us tonight in the name of Jesus. Because I want us to hear and I want us to pray and I want us to rebuke and I want us to bind and I want us to denounce the works of darkness that's coming against us. I'm not upset. I'm not worried. And I am not fearful of what the enemy will try to do. The Lord has given me influence and I lift my hands before God because I know many of you all are here, not because I called you, but because God gave me something that when the call went out in this time, it is for you all to come. And it's for all of you all. But God, when God begins to expand your territory, guess what he does? He begins to give you influence. The influence that you have must be given back to God. Otherwise, you're going to be operating in sorcery and witchcraft. You're going to be going to that church with all that music, but no deliverance. You're going to be going to the church where you're never convicted about living a sinful life. Oh, God loves you, baby. Just, just you know, you, you get time. But they, they don't tell you, no, no, no. If you don't make a decision today that the end of your life is, is right, right, right at the door, they don't see that. They don't want to tell you that. Even if they see it because they're already attached and they're in covenant with forces of darkness and it's happening in the church. So somebody has got to say, this is what we're dealing with right now. This is what's happening right now. The wars that we're seeing, the civil war that's happening right now in this country, it's the forces of darkness working, working, working to bring demise and to bring separation to the body. That's why God is saying, all there's a lot of hatred, you have to guard your heart. So as a person of color, when you walk outside, you feel that, tem you feel that fear. I sometimes don't want to go outside in my own community and walk because I am one of very, very few. But I still have to address that spirit of fear that will want to keep me hostage in my own home. The devil's a liar. I reject that because the power really is inside of me. What is he working with on my mindset? My mindset that I don't watch the news all the time. Because when you stay in front of the news, it is feeding your eye gate and it's creating a narrative in your mind. And a lot of that narrative becomes to go contrary to the word of God. So when he talks about in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, shall we read a little bit? Praise God. Y'all praying for me. You know I love you. Y'all praying for me. I need y'all praying for me. And let's pray for ourselves because the enemy wants to come and to snatch us. He wants to take the seed that's in our heart. But we're not giving him any territory. The seed of the word of God today will fall on the core of our hearts. The Lord God will seal this the word in our spirits. He will seal it in our hearts and he will make it take root. Root that shall not be uprooted, it shall not be uplifted, but it will bring forth fruit, fruit that shall remain. And we will walk in victory in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that in the name of Jesus. No word that we speak by the authority and the power of God is going to fall on the sidewalk. It will not fall on, on rocks. It's going to fall on hearts that are ready. Are we ready? Yes, we're ready. Are we ready? Yes, we're ready. We're ready to hear the word of God. We're ready to embrace the light of God's truth. We're ready to allow the darkness to be dismissed. We're ready to walk into the illumination of the true and living God so that we can understand and see the strategies that the enemy have set. And then God will lift us up higher. Remember parallax? He's shifting our vision. He's shifting our focus. He's elevating us so we can see the scheme of the enemy and that we can know the devices of the devil. In the name of Jesus, it is so. Somebody say, it is so. I know you're saying it. It is so. It is so. We walk by faith. We walk by faith, not by fear.
not by fear. Not by fear. Fear doesn't govern us. Or you may feel, you may feel fear rising in you because it's a natural response to the body. When your hands get all sweaty and your heart begins to pound and you start feeling yourself getting a little flustered. Oh, I feel that. I acknowledge that. But I understand that greater is he that's in me. I want to see. I want to see and I want to know. I want to see and I want to know. I want to see and I want to know the truth. I will not walk in darkness. I will not be a Christian that's clueless. I reject it. I denounce it. It is not of God. I will not be a stooge in the kingdom. I'm called to bring light to all who walk in darkness. We are the salt of the earth. We are the salt. I come on somebody say I'm the salt. I'm the salt. People are waiting on you to be illuminated. They're waiting for your truth. They're waiting for the God in you. Souls are assigned to your hands. Souls are assigned to your hands. And you will not walk in fear. You will not walk in bondage. You will not be a Christian that sits in a corner. No, you're coming out with bonus, a power, and authority by the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, we declare that it is so. Hallelujah. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Somebody say, yes, Lord. You got to receive this in your spirit. Hallelujah. I feel God. I feel the power of God. I feel the power of God. Receive it in your spirit. No more. No more. No more. We're going to back up. No, I'm going to walk in the light. My eyes may be closed, but it's wide open in the spirit. I will close my eyes, but it's wide open in the spirit. I'll be able to hear what's be not being spoken. Why? Because the Holy Ghost inside of me will let me know the thoughts of men. Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus did it. And if Jesus preserved, he, he knew the hearts of men. He can perceive their thoughts. That's inside of you. That is not you conjuring. That is not you walking in some contrary spirit. No, that's the power of the Holy Ghost exploding within us and taking control of our minds. So we're not walking in here like children in the dark, fumbling and bumbling around. No, we know the way. He said it's been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries, the secrets, the hidden operation of darkness. I call you to know how the kingdom moves. The kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. You will not be ignorant concerning the devices of the devil. When he comes at you, you already saw that. I'm sitting in peace. You're not going to disturb me. You're not going to infiltrate my peace. You're not coming in my territory. You're not having any access in my mind. Jesus said, when the wicked one comes, he will find nothing in me. I give you no ground. Yes, he came to tempt Jesus. What did he do? It was a mind game. It was all a mind. How did the devil lead Jesus anywhere? Nah, it wasn't like he took him out of hand and walked with him. We're talking about principalities. We're talking about astral and terrestrial territories. He said, look, I will give you all the kingdom and the rulers because I'm in control of them. Any leader that leads any major country, any man that has great influence. You all talk about Jay-Z, so we can talk about Jay-Z and, and Beyonce. You hear it, you see it, but you really don't want to acknowledge it that there's been some cultic activity going on in that, in that house. You know it, you see it, we hear it. Okay, and so what? The, the narrative is about, you know, when you talk about, you know, Illuminati, okay, and it's like, okay, all these conspiracy theories. That's what the enemy throws out there to bring confusion. Is it a conspiracy or is it not? No, it is the forces of darkness. It is the principalities and the powers. It is the rulers of darkness of this world. It is the hidden wisdom that's been given to some. And some have chosen to sell their soul to the devil. Their wealth is, is, is to lead them into a place of influence. But the influence that they have over the mind of the people is not to bring them into the light of God. It is to bring them under the control of demonic forces. It is to take control of our young women to make them think that it's okay to be loose. It's okay to live your life anyhow. We sit there and we watch. It's an Every major kingdom, especially in the arts and entertainment. So we allow our children to watch anything, but it's going into their eye gate and it's establishing root systems in their mind. The Lord God rebuke it. We got to come against the root of our mind so that God can plant seeds of righteousness and holiness in our thought process. That's why we're tormented. We're tormented because we're tormented because there's roots in our minds that were not planted by the Lord while they slept, while they slept, while they slept. An enemy came and planted tears, planted tears in their mind while they slept. Huh? Grandma used to tell me and Nana used to do this. There's a scripture that says that the tradition of men have made the word of God of no effect. The tradition of men have canceled out the power of the word of God. How powerful is tradition? How powerful is tradition? Huh? Well, that's the way my Nana used to do it. Don't be splitting no poles. What did the ever do to you, right? Don't step on no glass. 
you know, walk backwards here, do this, and okay, no, don't eat this on this day, and, and all the foolishness, you know, we're going to have to have our black eyed peas and, uh, I'm getting hot, y'all, um, my black eyed peas and rice on this day for to bring good luck. Let me know how that works for you, because I think we, we all living up in, in the ghetto, right? <laughs> Everybody cooking black eyed peas on New Year's Day, and everybody's, I'm not, and they, listen, if you're on food stamps, I ain't hating, because, you know, praise God, I'm just saying, it didn't work. But we believe in the tradition and we pass it on to our children and our children's children. And all those fables follow us. And those fables, as simple as they seem, they're strongholds of demonic thinking. There's a meta-narrative a meta of our mind that we believe. And it, our poverty really is in our mind. Our thoughts, in our, our thoughts is what govern the wealth. The wealth is inside of you, but we just don't know how to release it. So Lord, help us today so that we can see to understand. When we can understand, understanding all that getting, getting understanding. Let's just turn to the book. Second Corinthians, y'all with me? Uh, what time we got here? Whoosh. All right. All right, Second Corinthians chapter 10. It's a very, 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 very familiar uh, passage of scripture. God bless you all. Um, very familiar passage of scripture. Second Corinthians. Lord Jesus, why is somebody ring my doorbell right now? Y'all, okay. Y'all, hold on one second. I think that's my grandbaby. Give me one second. gonna be one of them nights y'all i apologize but praise god it was my grandbaby because she's the only one to ring the bell and uh, you know if the, if the five-year-old outside in the dark in the booties you want to make sure you get up and you get the door amen praise the lord so all right second corinthians y'all with me <laughs> yes that was kj ringing the doorbell god bless her hallelujah so second corinthians chapter 10 very familiar passage of scripture. I'm going to read tonight in the New Living Translation. I like this translation. It reads very, um, it reads very easy, very light for the understanding. But I want you to hear, we know when we talk about we rest not against flesh and blood, right? We know that. We know that. But what are we really wrestling? So let's look at it, right? Second, Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. It says, we are humans, but we do not wage war as humans do. We're not fighting like regular human beings. We're not entering the war with guns and knives. We're not even entering the war writing letters or coming with our words, although words are part of what we do. We understand that that is one level. That is the natural level, the tangible level, right? So we do not wage war as humans do. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. It says, we use mighty weapons, not worldly weapons. We use mighty weapons. So what's that saying? Not worldly weapons because the worldly weapons are not mighty. Or they may be powerful. They may be destructive, but they're not mighty. Might's another, you won't say a bomb was a mighty bomb. That's no, that, that level of legislation, that level of power and, and description is for outer worldly things. But he's saying you and I who are in the kingdom that we don't war like other people do. We don't war like humans do. Here is how we war. He says, we use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning. To knock down, listen, the strongholds of human reasoning. To knock down demons? No. To knock down spirits? No. To knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments, false arguments, to destroy a lie. Who is the father of lies? Who's the father of lies? Y'all put it up there. Come on. Who's the father of lies? Satan, the deceiver, who deceived, listen, deceived one third of the angelic hosts of heaven. The book of Ezekiel talked about God created him to be a cherub. And the word of God says, I believe it's in Ezekiel chapter 28, that thou Lucifer, cherub, that I, I created you and I gifted you. I gifted you. You were the one who walked among the stones. Now, I don't know exactly where the stones of fire in heaven, but I know when we talk about fire in heaven, it's somewhere around the altar that's in front of God. 
You had the level of power. There is right under God is the cherub. You were the archangel. And so in you was found iniquity. And so God said, I made you with that. Every angel have a will. Every angel has a will. You can't tell me that he made angels and the devil could influence one third of them to leave heaven and the others were like robots. No. He used the influence that God gave him and he went around heaven and he influenced one third of the angels. What kind of power does an individual, because you know a spirit being actually have that can actually influence angels to leave glory, the place where we're really striving to get to. What would make you want to leave heaven where creator God is? What kind of force do you have that you can sway the mindset of angelic beings, one third of them? And so we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Listen, I want to read it again to you. He said verse 4, right? We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down strongholds of human reasoning. The mindset, the mindset of man that is so far away from the ordinances of God. This is where we're warring. The stronghold is in your mind. The stronghold is in your mind. When you understand that the forces that you're fighting is coming from within your mind, he's stronghold of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments, lies, and deception. He said, verse 5, we destroy every proud obstacle. So now you're talking about a spirit that's in the heart. We're talking about proud obstacle. We're not talking about somebody coming against me. Proud obstacle. So now what was found in Lucifer? He said he had elevated himself in, found, in him was found iniquity and the spirit of pride rose up inside of him. And that pride is the major spirit. When you want to talk about rebuking demonic forces first inside of us, Lord, we denounce the spirit of pride. That's why he said he hates pride. Pride, God is, is an abomination. It's, God hates a prideful heart. He says, I hate it. I hate pride. If he said, Lucifer, pride was found in you. Iniquity was found in you. That spirit that says, I want it all. I want it all to myself. I am greater than, and matter everybody should give me obeisance, worship me, adore me, pride in me. You got to resist that spirit of pride. Sometimes you know how you wear your brand name clothes. Come on, I'm going to talk about it. Let's bring it down real close. You know when you dress little kids up real cute, they act different. They act brand new. You want to see a little girl act like she a princess? Go do her hair and put her barrettes in. Lord have mercy. Go ahead and get some little frilly dress and, and that's long and twirly. You want to see her twirling all day long? Because it does something to that. She, you, it just happens. It comes up out of them. It's inside of us. That thing is inside of us. That nature is there to be seen and to be dis in display. You want to feel better about yourself? Go ahead and just get dressed. I feel depressed. Get, get dressed. You want to shift your mindset about how you feel? Begin to... And sometimes, listen, I'm not saying that all the time when you put something nice on, it deals with the spirit of depression. That's a whole other situation. But I'm talking about sometimes when you want to give yourself a lift. So you got to you gotta dress the part before your feelings catch up with it. Because the more you present yourself, you take on another mindset. You listen, you, you dress up and you, and, you, and you act up. It's just, it's just, you know what it is. A lot of our sisters, you know when sexiness hits you. You know when you put that dress on, it's like, it's a bit much. Too much cleavage, honey. Or it's a little clingy. You know, COVID-19, we have put on our 19 plus pounds. So what used to fit us before COVID, it's a little snug. It's a little snug, right? So, you know, we, you know, I ain't going to judge us for going to do worship in, in clothes that's too tight. But, you know, what? when we get into the house of the Lord, we need to present our bodies, right? And our presentation needs to, everybody shouldn't be able to tell just how many things that we have going on in our bodies. We got to just be mindful of that. Presentation is important because you don't want to become a distraction, right? Because you have to work with people who are not as spiritual as others. Oh, I'll leave that right there. Let's, let's, let's walk on. Let's walk on to the door. He said, we destroy every proud obstacle and keep people from knowing God. Listen here. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. That keeps people from knowing God. That's our warfare. The battle is ignorance. The spirit of darkness comes. He said, if our gospel be hid, it is hid.